What's going on, man? Subscribe to the channel. YouTube, Sweet Science 70, Sweet Science 702, either one to find it. Um, smash the like button on this video. Hit the bell icon so you get the post notifications and stuff like that. I don't really have anything in specific that I want to touch on. I just want to talk about a few things. Um, the first thing is this Andy Ruiz, Anthony Joshua rematch. Um, now, the one of the things that I'm noticing that a lot of people are saying is that when Anthony Joshua fought Andy Ruiz the first time, he was too bulky, he was too big and stuff like that. And I don't know if you watched uh, the debate on the Gloves Are Off for uh, Sky Sports slash uh, Matchroom where all them UK cats, except uh, Paulie Malignaggi, but he might as well be a UK cat. Um, all them UK cats was talking about um, the first fight. And one of the things I think they got right on that was when the host said, the host of the whole show, he said, um, I think Anthony Joshua was already... Uh, emotionally invested in Jarrell Miller. You know, Jarrell Miller uh, was punking him at the press conference, talking about his therapeutic use exemptions and things like that. Um, also, um, I got something else to add to that, to add on top of that, because I think he hit the nail on the head with that. Is it fucking snowing in Vegas? Anyway, um, so I think he hit the nail on the head with that. Um, also, Anthony Joshua was not only emotionally invested in Jarrell Miller and zoned in on that fight he also was physically invested in Jarrell Miller um if you if you remember I don't know if you watched any of the press conferences but I think their first one um they were standing face to face and Jarrell Miller who is probably bigger than Anthony Joshua um he shoved him and it was like you know in Anthony Joshua's mind that kind of shit fucks with you if you a cat from the UK and you don't really know street dudes in the states like that wouldn't have worked on a street dude in the states, but a dude like Anthony Joshua, um, that 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 messed with him. You know what I'm saying? He's used to being like an alpha male, and dudes not testing him. And here you have Jarrell Miller, a street cat from the U.S. Um, and uh, you know he was getting in Anthony Joshua's head. I I, I really believe he was. And so um, you know, I feel like Anthony Joshua felt like he needed to bulk up for that fight um, to you know, pretty much be on the same playing field as Jarrell Miller, um, who ended up actually blowing his shot, as we all know, to uh, having three different that we know of um, PEDs in the system. Um, now, I'm a firm believer that PEDs don't actually get, don't accidentally get into your system. There's really no way for that to happen. So um, he blew his shot. And so what actually happened was they had that late replacement of Andy Ruiz, enter Andy Ruiz. Now, Andy Ruiz had a five-week notice, but he had just came off, uh, you know, uh, a fight in a fight camp. It might have been with Joseph Parker. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure, but um, a lot of people say that he beat Joseph Parker, whom of which Anthony Joshua beat as well. So it's, Andy Ruiz is definitely no slouch. I'm going to keep it honest and be real. I didn't know who that was. I didn't know who Andy Ruiz was before he beat Anthony Joshua. I'm one of those people, so I'm not going to lie to y'all. You know what I'm saying? So um, I didn't know who Andy Ruiz was, but... He had a five-week notice. Um, he's been boxing longer than Anthony Joshua, come to find out. You know what I'm saying? And Andy Ruiz, he got good hands. He's a heavyweight, so you don't have to ask. He doesn't have any power. Heavy, heavyweights have power. Now, do they have the same amounts of power? Like, does he have the power of uh, Deontay Wilder? Not necessarily, but he's a big man. So when you got the heavyweights fighting, if they take too many blows from the other opponent, whether you consider that opponent having power or not, the fight could be over. The fight very well could be over. So he had a five-week camp. Um, he comes in to fight Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua, I think, one, underestimated Andy Ruiz um, due to how he looks when that has nothing to do with them hands. Um, but he underestimated Andy Ruiz due to how he looks. Um, two, he was already emotionally and physically invested in the Jarrell Miller fight. So coming in to fight Andy Ruiz... I think he was just a little bit relaxed. Like he thought he, I think he already in his mind thought he was going to win that fight. And to which when the fight happened, he was in for a rude awakening. So, you know, the rest is history. The It's, it's in the books. And the Ruiz pulls out one of the biggest upsets of boxing history. I ain't say the biggest, but one of the biggest upsets of boxing history. If you disagree with that, know your, know your boxing history. So, um, Anthony Joshua 
is set for the rematch. Now, there's a few reasons why I think they're having it in Saudi Arabia. They've already talked about, and it's already a well-known fact, that Anthony Joshua has therapeutic use exemptions. What that means for you uh, people who might be casual or don't necessarily know exactly what that means, therapeutic use exemptions, basically in a nutshell, what they're saying is Anthony Joshua can use performance-enhancing drugs with a doctor's note. Pretty much, you know what I'm saying? That's that's virtually that's virtually what therapeutic use exemptions means. So he couldn't have it in the UK for several reasons. Um ticket scalping being one of them because Eddie Hearn is a crook. When you say Eddie Hearn's name, you have to add several S's at the end to make the snake sound. That's right on point, that's right on key. Eddie Hearn's a crook. He he allows fighters to fight knowing that they're that they are uh, PED users. So, um, Matchroom slash Sky Sports, um, is looking, you know, it's looking bad for them, like, because nobody's really subscribing to the zone. They brought Canelo, Canelo Alvarez's star power down. He was a bigger star before he signed to them. And they're just, they're just not doing a good job for the most part with their cards, with all these PEDs, um, you know, coming to light from fighters that are signed under them, you know, like Dillian White, for example. He had Deanna Ball in his system. And, you know, when you have Deanna Ball in your system, I don't care about getting the B sample. Everybody's asking, where's the B sample? You don't need to tell me that a man's guilty twice. The verdict already the verdict already shows from a sample that he had Deanna Ball in the system. That doesn't accidentally get into your system. Would you go to Subway and it was in your sandwich? Did you, did you go to Starbucks and it was in your coffee? You don't accidentally get Deanna Ball in your system. So Dillian White's a drug cheat. He's a cheater. Um, he also, when he fought Oscar Rivas, had gloves on the night of the fight that weren't approved by the other team. I don't know if you know that, but, you know, um, opposite opposite corners have to approve on the opponent's gloves. So they already approved a certain uh, a certain set of gloves. And then not only did he have the end ball in the system into which you can kill a fighter like that, um, you know, he came in with gloves that could have potentially been loaded and weren't approved on by Oscar Rivas. So I don't even give him credit for that win. And when you start, you know, that's, that's, that's the second or third time that I know of with Dillian White. So when that starts happening, you have to question all their wins now. So all of his wins are questionable to me now because how many fights were you on that did you not get caught for? How many fights did you fight on with PEDs in your system and loaded gloves and or loaded gloves? So, you know, that with him, Eddie Hearns trying to sanction the fight for uh, Chavez Jr. And, da and Daniel Jacobs, into which they need to protect protect Daniel Jacobs. He, I don't know why he's agreeing to this fight, because Chavez Jr. has been called for PEDs. Um, they were supposed to have the fight in uh, Nevada uh, and or California, one of the two. And um, the fight ended up getting moved because when Vada came to test Chavez Jr. for PEDs, whom of which is under match, he's working with all the rest of them, um, for PEDs, he refused to t he refused to take the test. Now Vada's like, look, we can't make you take a test, but if you don't, what we'll do is we'll just look at that as if you're that that's some type of an admission and you're guilty. So if you don't take that drug test, you might as well fail the drug test. So uh, Chavez Jr., who's uh, uh, he's a spoiled ass kid, he's a brat, he's not dedicated to the sport, he's a bum, he's he's a for real bum. Um, he refused to have them take the test because he thinks he's above boxing because of his dad. Um, so he refused to take the test. So what Eddie Hearns, Eddie Hearns decides to do is move the fight to, I think, Arizona, um, trying to bypass, you know, um, the fact that he can't fight somewhere else because Chavez Jr. is a, a, a known cheat. And from uh, unless I'm mistaken, I think Arizona's flexing on him, too. Like, nah, man, he cannot fight here. He cannot fight here. Um, he's he's a PED user. He's uh, he's a drug cheat. So I say all that to say, I believe that they're having the fight in Saudi Arabia because of a, of a few reasons. PEDs being one of them. Um, I also think something else that went into Anthony Joshua's loss when he fought Andy Ruiz. You're fighting in the states. When you fight in the states, I uh, apparently. I'm not saying it doesn't happen at all, but when you fight in the States, I think that the drug enforcement is a lot stiffer here in the States. So if Anthony Joshua was on PEDs or therapeutic use exemptions in that fight, it was very little next to none. So 
when you when you look at him, it's like oh uh, he didn't have his PEDs to help him either. He wasn't he didn't have the home court advantage. He was at all the disadvantages in that fight. All he had was himself. That was a perfect setup for the Mike Tyson Buster Douglas fight. That's all that was in 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 rerun. That was Mike Tyson Buster Douglas. Even though in actuality, uh, Mike actually beat Buster Douglas, but that's a whole not another conversation. So I think they're having it in Saudi Arabia because there is no real enforcement there. Anthony Joshua can come in on PEDs, and it's going to be a matchroom card. The only way Andy Ruiz can win this fight is if he knocks Anthony Joshua out again. You know what I'm saying? If he doesn't knock that man out and it goes to the cards, I promise you, I promise you, I don't know if you're hearing it here first, but on Sweet Science, you're on the air, Sweet Science 702 to YouTube. Um, if he doesn't win by knockout, if he doesn't get the knockout of Anthony Joshua, they're going to give the decision to him, even if it blatantly looks like Andy Ruiz whipped his ass. So um, keep that in mind. So that's why I think they're having the fight in Saudi Arabia, Arabia. And it's just like the UK is taking a lot of L's right now. All these PDs floating around with UK fighters. Um, all these UK fighters getting, you know, getting their asses whooped lately on cards. You got Chris Eubank Jr. who thinks who thinks he's going to be able to beat Jamal Charlo. And I used to like Chris Eubank Jr. until I realized he's a delusional, airhead, arrogant, pompous, which... A lot of UK guys are just pompouses, to, in, in, in my opinion. Um, you know, Chris Eubank Jr., I liked him at first, but then he lost to uh, Billy Joe Saunders. A loss does not determine if whether or not I'm going to stop liking a fighter. You know, I, 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 I love certain fighters who have, you know, who have more than one loss. Like, look at Ali and Tyson, the two baddest men of all time. They lost m more than three fights, you know, you know, for both of them. So, with that being said, look at Chris Eubank Jr. Now, I'm not saying he's on PEDs, but he's an arrogant pompous, and this was a guy who thought he was the shit, lost to Billy Joe Saunders, said in the post-fight press conference, I, I, I always find a way to win, a, a way to win. No, you don't. No, you don't, because if that was the case, you wouldn't have lost to Billy Joe Saunders, who schooled you, and, I, and I'm not, I'm actually not a fan of Billy Joe Saunders. I don't like him at all, but I'm glad he, he, he made Chris Eubank Jr., to a degree, humble himself, because he needs to be humble, because that guy's an idiot, and then he lost to, uh, I think, Groves, um, and, I, and I think that, I think that might have actually been an ass whooping. Um, so Chris, here, here you got Chris Eubank Jr., now he's trying to come back, talking about he wants to fight Jamal Charlo. Listen, man, listen, man, if you got beat by them dudes... Jamal Charlo will hurt you, and I hope and pray that Chris Eubanks Jr. gets that fight with Jamal Charlo so he can get his ass beat, he can be humbled yet again, and hopefully he rethinks even being in the sport because there's no room for pompous arrogance in the sport. Like, this is boxing, man, and you know, to when you're a boxer, and speaking of someone who boxes themselves, you know, I'm, I'm not a professional, but I do get it in. I am in very great shape. I box out of Las Vegas at Johnny Toko's Boxing Gym. My coach is a Hall of Fame fighter. You can look him up by the name of Kelsey Banks. Um, So as a fighter, you're supposed to be humble and you're supposed to give the next man respect unless he's not giving you any into which if you don't want to give him respect at that point, that's on you. But you're supposed to be humble and sitting up here talking about I don't feel like Jamal Charlo has any skills. A, a dude with two losses is talking about a dude with no losses, don't have no skills with the WBC belt. Chris Eubank Jr. is a joke, man. He's disgusting. He's an arrogant pompous. He's a, a, a brat who thinks boxing owes him something because his dad was somebody. And to which he's not even as good as his dad was, apparently. So he's a bum, and I hope he gets the Charlo fight and he gets his ass whipped. That's what I hope. Um, and, uh, look at look at Tyson Fury. Here's a, here's another savior. You know, all the all the AJ fans who were on the AJ bandwagon once he got his ass whipped, jumped to Tyson Fury. And what they want to do is y'all UK cats, y'all stay talking about somebody. Somebody's always the man that's gonna beat Wilder. Wilder has no skill. Wilder's this and he's that. Blah blah. First of all, half of y'all are just fans. Half of y'all aren't even fighters. So you can't sit up here and talk about a dude has no skill. When can you knock out Dominic Brazil yourself? And if you can, can you knock him out like that? Can you beat Luis Ortiz yourself? And if you can, can you do it like that? Can you put Tyson Fury on his ass? Technically three times, but two times, one of which the man was dead. He died for four seconds and Jack Reese decided to count to 76 uh, for Tyson Fury. So all this talk, Deontay Wilder has no skill. It takes skill to set that up and knock that many men out. Because half of y'all haven't knocked a person out in your life. And if you have, it hasn't been that many. I can guarantee you that. So 
I just don't get where, you, where these UK cats, what, what, what I think it is, is I think a lot of y'all are underlining racist or prejudice. There's a difference between racist and prejudice. Prejudice is the prejudge. Um, I think a, a lot of y'all just hate to see a black man be at the top of the sport again after Floyd Mayweather's exit. And then it just irks y'all that he 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 doesn't kiss nobody's ass. It's 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 a problem to y'all. But to be honest, man, Deontay Wilder is quickly becoming the face of boxing. It's just a fact, you know. Um, so we gotta let all that hatred go. Y'all gotta stop doing that and start giving this man credit because this is a once in a lifetime fighter. We not going we not gonna see another fighter like Deontay Wilder. Evander Holyfield told you that. You know what I'm saying? Some of the greats have have talked about Wilder in in a good light. Like man, listen. Y'all can talk about a skill all you want. First of all, you fight him and, and, and see what the outcome is. Y'all said such and everybody's going to beat him. Y'all y'all did that with Floyd. You know, Lu, Lu, you know, if Ortiz would have beat him, it's because Wilder didn't have no skill. But when he loses, oh, it's because he's an old man. You can't whoop that old man. And if that's the case, how come nobody wants to fight the old man? Hmm? Like Dillian White, for example. Y'all out here crying, talking about he hasn't gotten his shot. Deontay Wilder gave him several chances to get his shot at the WBC belt. One of which, he told him, listen, since Dillian White said Luis Ortiz is an old man and he'd smash him to bits. So by saying that, in Dillian White's mind, that's an easy fight. So if that's an easy fight, Deontay Wilder told him, you know what? Go ahead and fight Luis Ortiz. If you can beat him, I'll give you a shot right away. I won't take no mandatories. I'll give you a shot right away at the WBC belt if you can beat Luis Ortiz. So if if Dillian White wants the belt so bad and Ortiz is that old and it's that easy to smash him to bits, why don't you just do that so you can get your shot at the belt? Because he know what's up. That man don't even believe in himself to fight Luis Ortiz probably with PEDs. Dillian White's another bum. The UK is just taking a lot of losses right now, man. Um, you know, y'all can argue all y'all want, but Tyson Fury ran from the rematch. He went and signed with a different promotional company in the midst of them finalizing their contractual agreements for the rematch. That's what he did. These are facts. I'm not making this up. Everybody knows this. You know what I'm saying? Tyson Fury went and signed with a different promotional company, distancing himself from the rematch, but then wanted to turn around and have y'all believe, and a lot of y'all idiots believe it, that Deontay Wilder didn't want the fight. Talking about he ran from the rematch. You bum dosser. Like, shut that stupid shit up, man. The man's a drug addict, and he's a drunk. That's that's just that's just the facts. That's why he had that, that interview not too long ago, a couple months back, with Michelle Joy Phelps, and the man's drinking a beer. Now, I, I, a lot of y'all going to say, let the man do what he wants to do. I don't want to hear that shit. He was supposed to quit that. He was supposed to dedicate himself. He talks about he don't care about money, right? That, that was his... That was his uh, his love story, his his song and dance to y'all. I overcame this and I overcame drug habits and and I don't care about money. I'm donating my whole purse. But yeah, he turns right around talking about I got a hundred million for this and I got thirty two or twelve million to be in the WWE. But this is a dude t telling y'all he don't care about money. That's why y'all UK y'all I, I can't I can't respect y'all UK cats, dog. And I'm not saying everybody in the UK. Some of y'all in the UK got sense, but a majority of y'all UK cats, man. Like I just I just can't rock with y'all. I can't and I. Don't rock with y'all. You know what I'm saying? Um, so the UK is looking real bad right now. America's winning. Deontay Wilder is pretty much the face of boxing, man. And uh, America runs boxing, you know? Like, even like our promoters, Al Heyman, you never hear him talk. You don't hear Al Heyman out here running his mouth. You know, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's just some things I wanted to touch on today. Again, make sure you subscribe to the channel, Sweet Science 702. Sweet Science, you're on the air is the name. Again, smash the like button, hit the bell icon. We out.